Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Victoria Coran Mitchell. In the news this week, there's further evidence that the founders of the Football Super League are out of touch with the modern game, as footage emerges of their plans to liven up matches by awarding points for artistic interpretation. <laughs> the opening of a new university in Moscow. One student picks the worst possible day to wear his new platform shoes. <laughs> and the RSPCA issues an urgent warning to pet owners after several tons of cat litter are contaminated with quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian from Dartmoor who is so Devonian that when he had his vaccination, his cream developed a clot. <laughs> Please welcome Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is an author and academic who is one of the hosts of Britain's Lost Masterpieces. If anyone from Greece's Lost Masterpieces is watching, they're all in the British Museum. Please welcome Emma Dabbery. <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Emma, take a look at this. That's uh, the chairman of Liverpool, and there's Boris Johnson reacting very quickly. There's Jose Marino, he's a football manager. He's leaving, he's got a job now of Amazon, he's lost his other job. <laughs> and, uh, yes, this is a protest outside Chelsea about the new Super League that was uh, put forward on Monday and had sort of completely fallen over by Wednesday. And I think people's objection was that it was all to do with money. Is that a new thing in football? No, I think their <laughs> objection mainly was that if you could be in this league, there'd be no relegation. And if mm. you were one of the teams that wasn't in this league, you couldn't get into the league. So, essentially, it was a series of exhibition matches. You know, if you lost, it didn't matter. Bit like this. Bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there was relegation in this, Ian would be in some sort of semi-amateur dramatic version of this somewhere. <laughs> in a church hall in Tunbridge Wells, but, you know, he's not. I won Mock the Week, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, well, that is one of our theme plans. <laughs> As you said, Paul, it only took 72 hours for the plans to collapse. The football fans were absolutely united in their hatred for this because sport has to have an element... You have to be able to lose in a sporting <laughs> yeah. contest, you know, and if you can't lose, then it's not a sporting contest. So they were... I mean, I think football fans and the, you know, all over the country you were as united as they've ever been. I actually found it all very inspiring and it really Ooh. wasn't something... I didn't expect to be inspired by football fans, but honestly, the way they demonstrated the power, like, people power, to actually, like, make a change happen in that way and so rapidly was yes. yeah, kind of inspiring, it, especially... Especially in these times, you know, where people can feel quite powerless about decisions that are made. I, I thought it was... A brilliant 48 hours. Genuinely, I'm going to say it, that 48 hours is the most I've enjoyed football in my lifetime. <laughs> and I say that as a football fan, because you had anger, you had excitement, that's why I'm into football. And then we won. I've never experienced that before. It was everything. Which team do you support? Plymouth. Oh, I see. We weren't in the 12. No. <laughs> You're lucky to be in the 92, aren't you? <laughs> And then it created a situation where Boris Johnson was seemingly taking an anti-capitalist stance. I heard him, you know, complaining about the commodification of football, how it couldn't be untethered from its roots and just sold around the world. And I was like, not expecting that. So, you know, starting to see kind of, like, socialism perhaps creep in as a... As a not quite. <laughs> Certainly a response I hadn't anticipated. Do we suspect that those billionaires who own those clubs had failed to donate to the Tory party? <laughs> Never that. <laughs> Ian, did you take part in the protests at all? I was down there outside the the um the, the <laughs> Wembley. Wait, the Wembley. No, don't help me. <laughs> Watching Ian struggle with popular culture is one of the highlights <laughs> of my life. <laughs> Sorry. Well, let's have a look at the uh, you know the the rich wealthy club managers who put this together. Only 72 hours for it to collapse, but they've been working on it for four years. Here they are in 2017 having dinner, hatching the plan. And if we oh, look around, wow. we can see the Glazers, who own Manchester United, John Henry's their owner of Liverpool. And, mm. and who's that on the left there? Just in... It's Ian Hislop. <laughs> <laughs> Rumbles. Yeah, my plan to destroy football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly, the world. nearly came to fruition. Joel Glazer is in the photo. Mm. Why was Gary Neville, the Sky Football pundit, worried to hear that Joel Glazer was involved? Gary Neville, who formerly played for Manchester United, hates Joel Glazer forever. Well, let's hear mm. what he's got to say about, uh, about Mr Glazer. He's intelligent. He knows what he wants. And 
he's parked his weasels <laughs> and he's come out. And I thought, oh, this is serious. He's parked his weasels. Parked his weasels. I'm assuming it's a football term, is it? That is a football term, ah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, Ian will explain it for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, there used to be a club called uh, the Weasels. <laughs> uh, and they changed their stadium from the, the Den to the Park. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The Nottingham Weasels, wasn't it, Ian? <laughs> but they were they were good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you've parked a weasel, can you be guaranteed that a weasel will be there when you get back? <laughs> I think your issue is clamping them. Yes. You need tiny clamps, don't you, if you're going yes. to clamp a weasel? Yeah. <laughs> and then you get the RSPCA involved. Oh, God. Those busybodies. Yeah, I'm exactly. just trying to park my weasel. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're like balloons, you can rub them on your jumper and stick them against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> can we do that with a weasel? Can we check that? Didn't they slip in the announcement, like, really late at night as it well? It was, like, 11 p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah. And it was after the line of duty. I mean, have some respect. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> it has been a bit of a PR disaster. Uh, do you know, Ian, who did the PR for this, uh, this venture? No. Um, was it the Test and Trace um, <laughs> consortium? Was it Serco? Uh, no, it was in-house communications. So I think I have uh, problems with the, the caps lock on their computer. <laughs> that is run by Katie Perrier, formerly head of communications for Prime Minister Theresa May. Oh, <laughs> wow. I love his career. Yeah, she'll be good at European coalitions that didn't quite happen. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Manfred leads United, made a very good point. He told Sky Sports, it's amazing the amount of uproar that comes into the game when money's at stake. It's a shame it's not like that with other things that go wrong at the minute, like racism and stuff like that. So, so here's the thing. What was the punishment that UEFA threatened for a player who played in the Super League? You wouldn't be able to play in the World Cup, the Euros. You wouldn't be able to play for your country, basically. For how long? Ever. A lifetime ban. Mm. And what is the penalty for racist abuse on the pitch? It's usually a, a very small amount of money. Yeah. It's a ten-match ban. Right. So if you played in the Super League, they don't want you to play ever again. Racist abuse, you know, take ten matches off, come back. Mm. Is this going to change anything that he's made this point? Will, that, will anyone learn from that? I think it just points out the disparity, but I doubt much is going to change. I think if I've learned anything from watching football in the last 25 years, it's things aren't going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boris Johnson said that he would drop a legislative bomb. What did he mean by that? He's going to park his weasels. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how fast he can actually get legislation through um, or threaten to when it's something really important, like football. Mm. <laughs> Any other sort of major bill takes years to pass through the Commons. <laughs> well, how much does he know about football? What is Boris Johnson's experience of football? He wants rugby tackled a person in a charity match. Let's have a look at that very match. <laughs> it's like a, a metaphor for Brexit right there. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know the rules of football, but I feel this is like breaking some of them. <laughs> Presumably Boris Johnson went to a rugby playing school. That's a thing, isn't it, that posh schools... Yeah, but even playing set. rugby, you don't do that. <laughs> you make an attempt to get the ball, don't you? No, it's just, if he sees a rule to be broken, he does it. He just can't help himself. <laughs> it's just an instinct. I think someone said to him that um, there's this thing that's happened in football. You know, and, and, and some people don't know as much as we do about the subject. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was explained to him that this is what working-class people do and like. And he remembered, which, you know, you've got to hand it to him, he remembered mm. that they'd voted for him. Yes, of course. So he thought, I know what'll make me popular. I'll save football. It's difficult to tell, isn't it? I you feel like I'm on a football programme. It's difficult to tell, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> what are your thoughts on VAR? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the fans didn't like it, because the idea of this closed shop, this league, it would be the same result all the time. And, as you say, things are meant mm. to move about. I mean, if we look at the Premier League since the year 2000, you know, the winners, you know, we see Manchester United, Manchester United, Arsenal, Manchester United, Arsenal, then Chelsea, Chelsea, <laughs> Manchester United, Manchester United, Manchester United, Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City, Ooh. Manchester United, Manchester <laughs> City, Chelsea, Leicester City, Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester City. And it's that kind of variety. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> 
This was the European Super League with 12 top clubs all competing for the title of Europe's greediest bastard. <laughs> Labour also came out against the plan. Keir Starmer has a lot in common with the average football supporter. After all, only this week he was thrown out of a pub. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Josh, take a look at this. Boris, leader of the opposition, everyone on the campaign trail. Yeah. He's taken a second job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Scottish dentistry. Oh, look, where's Wally? <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. Oh, and there we go. Oh, uh, government. Texting each other. It's the campaign trail for the local elections, which is an um, exciting time for the <laughs> politicians to get to meet the people again and realise how unpopular they are. And who's been texting each other that you mentioned just then? Boris <laughs> and uh, James Dyson. Mm hmm What about? He wants to know um, whether it's safe to put pieces of your body other than your hand into one of those dryers. <laughs> <laughs> and you... what's the answer? Uh, don't do it, Ian. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> however, however much you need to dry it, it's not yeah, worth fine. it. James Dyson, the, the prominent Brexiteer. Why are you pointing out he's a Brexiteer? I think that's pretty unnecessary. We've all moved on. <laughs> I don't think we have to go on about him having moved all his manufacturing to another country because he's so patriotic. I don't, I don't think we have to bring that up. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> we moved from Somerset to Singapore, you yes. know, to really celebrate, uh, you know, the independent mm. country. And but So then why was he texting the British Prime Minister? Because um, there was a plan that Dyson were going to make ventilators. Um, and this was, again, an incredibly patriotic move. Um, I'm going to make ventilators. But there was only one thing stopping him, and that was the tax status of his employees and whether they had to pay more tax if they returned to this country. So in the middle of a pandemic, the important thing really is not the nature of the ventilator, will it work, can we do it, but it's the tax status of the people working for Dyson. So he had to text the Prime Minister and say, can you sort this out? And the Prime Minister rightly, I mean, it's not football, but it was still important, mm. said, I will get the Chancellor to sort out this tax status. And it's amazing, it all happened, except the ventilators that never got made. <laughs> terrible, though. I mean, the thing is, James Dyson is the kind of person you would think could yep. come up with a lot of Oh, ventilators. I don't know about those ventilators. Have you seen the power of the hand dryer? <laughs> You're going to get inflated by that ventilator. <laughs> you get involved in that. Right. Are you sympathetic to that, Ian? That Boris Johnson right. said it was a national emergency. This is one of our most successful manufacturers. Yeah, he says that, he can that, make that, That's not what anyone's quibbling about. No one's saying... I mean, this is typical Boris. He defends the accusation against him that wasn't made. So no one said, how dare you try and get ventilators in the middle of a crisis? They said, how dare a prominent industrialist ha have immediate access to you in order to interfere in the tax situation? That's all. It's a continuation of the lobby row. Uh, the idea that it's, oh, well, I suppose you want everyone to die then. Oh, yes, that's the end of the argument. That's very much it. It's all over now. Thank you. I mean, it's just rubbish. The government <laughs> has announced an inquiry into the leaking of the texts, but what is Boris Johnson's cabinet secretary, Simon Case, concerned about? Simon Case said that Boris Johnson is using the same phone number um, that he's been using for years and that he'd asked him to change the number, but Boris said, no, I've given this number to a lot of young women. <laughs> 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 I've made that bit up. I've no idea. There, there, but do you know what? There will be some women going, I knew he hadn't changed his number. <laughs> that is unbelievable. <laughs> well, staying on the subject of sleaze, yeah. who fancies a game of Crony Connect? Oh. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Fingers on buzzers, please, for yes. a round of Crony Connect. Who is this and what's their connection to the government? <laughs> Ian and Josh? Uh, that is Red Rum. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I think that is Matt Hancock's sister. Ooh. But I don't know her name. Is it Emily Gilroof? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is! How oh, am I? <laughs> he must you know think what? we're really stupid or something on this show. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know what? Only connects, not as difficult as it looks <laughs> on the TV, <laughs> is it? Should we call this round, can you read out loud? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's an interesting photograph anyway. She's got the rosette there. And the, well, the she floor. hasn't got a rosette. She's printed one out on a computer yeah. <laughs> and then put it on and attached it to the stable. And why is Matt Hancock's sister in the news? Oh, because she has been given an NHS contract, um, coincidentally. Well, he was health secretary. She owns shares in the company that won contracts to supply the NHS in Wales. And who else owns shares in the company? His horse. He did. The, he, Matt Hancock himself did. What? Yes, yes, Matt Hancock and his sister owned shares in the company that got the contract. And their government oh, spokesman wow. said Mr Hancock has acted entirely properly. I suppose you'd expect everyone to just die. 
<laughs> well, let's not hand out any contracts. Let's just kill everybody. Fingers on buzzers. Yes. Who's this and what's his government connection? Yes, Paul and Emma. Boardroom. Yes, nearly. Boardroom, man. Nick Boardroom. Nigel Boardroom. Nigel Boardroom. <laughs> Close enough. Nigel Boardroom? <laughs> Is it Steve Office? <laughs> Bobby Filing Cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and who is Nigel Boardman? Is he the person running the investigation into the Greensill yes. scandal? But didn't his law firm also get more than seven million in government contracts? It's a small so... world, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, you mentioned the campaign trail earlier. That's obviously been exciting, the local elections, regional elections. Mm. Uh, what's uh, Boris Johnson been up to in Gloucestershire? Forgetting the name of the mayor. Boris Johnson was in Gloucestershire campaigning for a Conservative to be elected mayor. Uh, should we have a look? Do you know who the West of England mayor is? I'm, I'm very much in favour of, uh, of powerful mayors uh, in the West of England and elsewhere, but what I want to see is a strong uh, Conservative mayor in uh, London and across the, and the West Midlands and uh, West of England and well, across, across the whole of the country. You have a Conservative West of England mayor at the moment. I just wondered if you know who that person is. Well, I can tell you I'll be out campaigning for the West of England mayor it sounds like Ian trying to name the England man. Yeah. <laughs> and he couldn't even be bothered before he went out campaigning to find out the guy's name. He's, he's left it too late to put that hard hat on. I think the damage has been done. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson went to do something in Wolverhampton that uh, they always like to do. They eat ice creams a lot. Blair started oh, they love it. He ate ice creams at the seaside. Wolverhampton went to the pub. Uh, oh, he went to a yeah, pub yeah. called The Mount. And here he is uh, drinking his pint, uh, almost as if that's the kind of thing he does normally. Because this was oh, delayed wow. because of the funeral. There was meant to be a photo opportunity of him having a pint on the first day. Of course. And out of respect to Prince Philip, um, the photo opportunity was delayed, which I think is rather touching. <laughs> <laughs> Welling off, actually, as you were describing it. So what happened when uh, his opposite number... Keir Starmer went to the pub. Oh, he did not go well. He got mm. chucked out of the pub. Mm. Cheating in a pub quiz. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get as far as the pub quiz. Should we have a look at what yeah. happened? Yeah. Sorry, I am the landlord. He's the landlord. That man is not allowed in my pub. He's the landlord. I'm not going to physically hurt him. That man... That's assault. I am not bothering you. I am not bothering him. That man is not allowed in my pub. Get out of my pub. Go on. Get out of my pub. <laughs> but it's weird. His bodyguard looks just like him. Yes. yes. I, yeah, I thought it was okay. Keir Starmer. Initially, I was like, whoa, this is better than I thought when it was Keir Starmer <laughs> wrestling the landlord. Ooh. Now, some people say yeah. that regional elections are dull. Do they? How dare they? Well, those are people that haven't seen the Welsh Conservative leader, Andrew Davis, lighting up the campaign trail. Oh, yes. And would you like to see him here uh, being interviewed by BBC Breakfast? Oh, yes, yeah. please. Why not? To build back greener and to put so much money into the road system. I don't think so, because ultimately it's about decarbonising the transport system and we know that we're going to have to have better transport links to create opportunities for business to open. And we're pro-business government if we're elected on May the 6th and we want to have a big open for business sign for Wales in our transport system. We know that the inquiry that uh, looked at the M4 relief road, for example, in South East Wales, said it hit the environmental credentials uh, that it would have to meet and we know for a fact that it is achievable and we know that the UK government are supportive of delivering the M4 relief road as well as upgrading our union highways such as the A55 that will lead to the Hollyhead Seaport that we wish to create in, under our manifesto proposal and also the A40 that provides us through traffic to the fish guard and the Irish ports. Either the colour balance is wrong or he's one of the Simpsons. <laughs> It was like all the oxygen was being yeah. like sucked from the room. He was kind of mesmeric. Yeah. You should get him on just a minute, Paul. Yes. <laughs> There's not a hesitation. There was no, nothing absolutely. there. Absolutely. And when can we look forward to the briefing starting in a fantastic new £2.6 million briefing room that's been built at 10 Downing Street? Never. Never. <laughs> no, they're not going to use it. Why not? Well, because Boris Johnson um, said he was going to have a spokesperson. So Allegra Stratton who used to be a TV journalist and most things, was going to be Boris. She was going to go on the podium and answer for him, like in America, you know, mm. you'd have an official spokesman. And this was going to be her room, and every day she'd come out there and she'd, she'd say stuff. And, <laughs> I, <laughs> and then I think Boris Johnson suddenly thought, 
well, hang on, if someone's going to go out there and talk a load of rubbish, it'd be me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he said, no, you're not going to do this, we're not going to have this. Also, um, he got drunk and bought a pool table on eBay and he needs to put it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, but also, according to The Times, anyway, that there was a fear that the briefings would risk giving oxygen to difficult stories for ministers. So that the press would only use this briefing room stuff if it... Or to if... ask questions about what's happening. <laughs> 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 this is local election fever, which, fortunately, the experts from SAGE tell us has an R number of 0, 0.0. <laughs> the Tory candidate for mayor in the West Midlands is Andy Street. I don't know what his manifesto policies are. I'm guessing no income tax, no VAT. <laughs> <laughs> it's been revealed that Matt Hancock's sister set up a firm and gave Matt Hancock some shares. As health secretary, he had the potential to oversee the handing out of lucrative contracts, and basically Bob's your uncle, who also happened to get a £2 million PPE contract. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for round two, which we were hoping would be an exciting new format, but feedback over the past 72 hours has been brutal, so we're just going <laughs> to stick with a picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Paul and Emma. Now, this is a, obviously a town crier who's banned because he's been too noisy. Almost the opposite. The shouting spreads COVID. And so... They have to be silent town criers. Yes! Silent kind of town criers. Counterintuitive. Finally, some good COVID news. I know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we think, because it is time again for the annual British Town Crier Championships. <laughs> Where does the time go? Yes. So they've come <laughs> round again. And um, this year it's been decided they're going to be completely silent. Uh, and how will, how will that happen, do you think? How will that be managed? Are they going to text it? Do you know, they, they were going to get them to video themselves and send it in, but the worry was voiced that town crisis... They're on the older side of the spectrum and people were worried they wouldn't be able to work the video. Uh, so instead, the plan is that the town criers will submit their entry to the competition in writing. <laughs> yes. In Raven's blood. <laughs> what? Town writers. Oh, big, bold letters, presumably. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh. should we have a look at a previous championship? Oh, why not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, where the sun is. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually into that. I've never heard it before. That was kind of banging. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah I did, actually. <laughs> so what do you think they'll be looking for in a silent cry? How would they judge that? The words, I suppose. You write your own words, right? Yeah. So yeah. You just write... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, no, it's got to be about nature and the environment. Oh, has it? Yeah. Weasels? It, we yeah. <laughs> oh, <you> weasels. <laughs> is that the end, do you think, for town cry? Is that the death knell? No, no, they've been going on for years. They got through the Black Death, didn't they? They'll get through this. Well, that's true. <laughs> and actually, there's a particular town crier in Bognor Regis, yeah. Jane Smith. She says that the, that the criers, you know, will, will announce the releasing of restrictions. She Bring talks. out your dead, that sort of thing. <laughs> 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 Sticking with COVID news, we had hands, face, space. Yeah. Mm. What might the new message be on avoiding COVID transmission? Park your weasels. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, got to be. Apparently, people should practise... Garlic breath distance. Garlic breath and that's according to Dr. Julian Tang. Meaning <laughs> that if you can smell what the person next to you had for lunch, you're too close. Which is good advice, huh? obviously, unless you've got COVID and then you can't smell it. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if, I mean, I don't want to put holes in this, but what if they haven't eaten garlic? <laughs> we just get closer and closer to check and then right. you get COVID. So it doesn't work at all. And finally, what has the artist Lucy Sparrow been up to during the pandemic with Fuzzy Felt? She's created an edition of this programme out of Fuzzy Felt, which oh. has proved to be more popular than anything we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> she probably could. What she's made is a fully stocked pharmacy. Oh, wow. With 15,000 items. Look at that. That is entirely made of Fuzzy Felt. What, what is the woman? <laughs> oh, no, I think that's her. Oh, well, oh, sorry. Standing in the felt creation. Of course, we don't know how big she is, but... The this... Saturday boy needs replacing. He's not doing the <laughs> work there, is he? Oh, I love that it's the NFS, the National Felt Service. <laughs> Awful, though, if you're in desperate need, like I often am, of your Ventolin prescription and yeah. you walk in and everything's made out of felt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was the yeah. other medicinal thing that Lucy made in 2018? Was it a Dyson ventilator? <laughs> think, think bigger. Life support machine. Nightingale Hospital, out of felt. There you go. Full felt surgery, in which live felt medical procedures were undertaken in her purpose-built felt operating room. Let's have a look at that. Look at that. <laughs> 
Can I just... I don't want to be rude. Is she having a breakdown? It's <laughs> <laughs> <Slowly. laughs> It's pretty amazing, though. Look it at that is. light. I mean, obviously, it's all an incredible waste of time, but it's... But it's... isn't life. <laughs> <laughs> this is the British Town Crying Championships that will be taking place in silence. According to the new competition, rather than belt out their cries, they just have to submit them in writing. It's hoped the idea might catch on elsewhere, particularly with the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phone with a spy. Yeah, OK. And what? what and what? they're on Instagram. It's Instagram, it's, it's the social... It's the new spy... Yeah, Social spy. media platform just for spies. Um, I don't know if you're joking. Yes, it is. It's oh, MI5. Is it? MI5. What? Sorry. MI5. <laughs> <laughs> Are we in an old people's home? home? <laughs> this perspex screen. Hello, dear. <laughs> MI5. <laughs> MI5 have joined Instagram. Yes. Hey. Yes. MI5, the Secret Service has decided that now, to be modern, it shouldn't be secret anymore. Mm -hmm. So nowadays they're going to be transparent. Yes. Oh, wow. Which yes. seems interesting idea, and anything that they know, they're going to put online. Wouldn't they be on it anyway, but posing as something mm. else in yeah. order to spy? <gasps> Do you think it's People a trick think... to make us think they're not everybody else on there? Yes. Oh. Uh, oh. But the people that they say they are is somebody else. Counterintelligence. Thames Water Authority. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see their first post? Oh, yeah. yes, please. Here it is. MI5 clickbait. Oh. The best thing about that is it's made entirely out of felt, isn't it? <laughs> Are we looking into the mouth of some malevolent alien? <laughs> I mean, metaphorically, yeah. I don't really know what it is. They've just put that up there. Is it popular? Like, Are do we have many followers? I'm going to chuck them a like for that. Not a follow, though. <laughs> Not a follow. Are you going to kind of tease them and see if they follow you back? I am. I am going to tease them and see if they what, follow you're me back. You're asking MI5 to follow you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. On the subject of spies, yes. how is the government planning to crack down on foreign spies in the UK? They're going to stop them flying in. No, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, they're going to ask them to simply announce themselves, to register their presence. OK. And well. they're making it a criminal offence not to register as a spy. Oh, that, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst idea since the European Super League. <laughs> <laughs> And what sophisticated methods have spies been using, according to MI5, on the internet? So MI5 has gone on Instagram. What does MI5 say that foreign spies have been doing? They've been posing oh. as shepherds. They're shepherd spies. <laughs> <laughs> Disguise themselves as weasels and parking themselves indiscriminately <laughs> in the Greater Manchester area. Disguising, whether it's weasels or shepherds, they've been disguising themselves as other people and creating fake profiles. On LinkedIn. On LinkedIn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, is anyone on LinkedIn? No, what spy is going on LinkedIn? <laughs> oh, this person got a 2 1 from <laughs> Birmingham <laughs> University. <laughs> Let's tell Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Last question on spying. Yes. How has one man in Cambridgeshire helped his dogs to spy on the neighbours? He's uh, fitted them with uh, telescopes in their head. <laughs> 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 he secretly put stuff the tape recorder up their ass. And then he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's drilled holes in the fence. Oh, that's so that the easy dogs way. can watch the world going by. Look, here he is with the dogs. This is yeah. Andy and the dogs. And, uh, and here they are at the fence. Hello. Hearing <laughs> <laughs> through. That is... It looks like the dog version of Naked Attraction. <laughs> I mean, the neighbours must have been so relieved when it turned out that's what the holes were for. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at the previous picture? Is he being pulled along by his own dog? Yeah. Or has he lost his sleigh? <laughs> <laughs> I also just want to shout out his sartorial choices, cos... His... Yeah. I think the dogs are dragging him to a knitwear shop to get something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's the definition of loneliness when you find yourself being pulled off by a husky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. This is the news that MI5 have joined Instagram. According to The Week, the Home Office plans to create a central register of foreign agents. Before that, the best we had was the visitor's book for Salisbury Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the odd one out round. Paul and Emma, your four are... Yeah. The Amazon logo, a Donald Trump waxwork, Cuthbert the Caterpillar and Rudd Stewart. Um, one thing I know is that the waxwork of Donald Trump, I think, had to be removed from public exhibition because people kept sort of attacking it. Um, Cuthbert the Caterpillar, any ideas? It's an imitation, isn't it? Or a copy of Marks and Spencer's Caterpillar cake. Is it yes. Colin? Yes, it's Aldi. Colin. Is it Aldi, did it? And the Rod Stewart, that Rod Stewart look alike or sounded like, probably just because the name is similar and he's kind of got a similar look. 
I know what the Amazon story was. Mm -hmm. The one on the left was announced as their new logo. But they had to change it because people said it looked like Hitler's moustache. <laughs> <laughs> and also his cheeky smile, obviously. <laughs> I know what it is. What is it? It's the Cuthbert, the, the caterpillar's the odd one out. Yes, what is that? Um, because the others are all... Oh, God, I actually... Ugh, I just worked it out and I've forgotten. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. But I know he's the odd one out. Yeah, well, this is academia in action, isn't it? <laughs> we can see. He's not the odd one out. The man on the bottom right is the odd one out. Rod Stewart. Yes, he is. Yes, that's right. But why? Well, because he's not intending to look like Rod Stewart. It's just a coincidence that's his name and it's a coincidence that his hair's done like that. No, and so Rod Stewart likes him and says, you're OK, you can carry on being my yeah, he's got Yeah, he's got the approval of the original. That's what I'm saying. It, it, he's sort of, yes. Yeah. He, they've all suffered from looking like someone, apart from Rod Stewart, yeah. who's benefited from it. He is actually a professional Rod Stewart impersonator. Yeah. But you're right, Rod Stewart himself proves. Yes. And, in fact, Rod and his wife Penny hired Rod Stewart <laughs> oh, my to <laughs> wish their son Liam a happy birthday. They paid him £25 to make a video. 25 quid? Come on, Rod, you've got <laughs> some money in the bank. Give him 100 quid. Well, let's see the video. <laughs> OK. Well, hello, Liam. Rod Stewart here. How are you? I've got a message for you from Penny Lancaster. Not too shabby. <laughs> Happy birthday, Liam. You're in my heart. Well, I think they should get their money back. <laughs> <laughs> if I got a message from my mum and they gave my mum's full name. If I got a card from my mum and it said, Dear Josh, happy birthday. Love Sarah Widdicombe. I think it's <laughs> very weird indeed. Do you know yes. how Rod Stewart got involved with the pop band McFly's Tour of America? Did they cover one of his songs? Did he...? No. No. Yeah, this is a story that makes me like Rod Stewart tremendously. I'm already an enormous fan. Are you? Because, yes, because he's a brilliant musician and he doesn't care about anything apart from his model train collection. And I love that about him. And if I didn't love him already, I'd love him for this. He prevented McFly from getting visas to go to America because, according to McFly, Rod secretly took their passports and drew dicks in the back of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you can prove that it's a reasonable likeness, but they still let you through immigration. <laughs> You're right, there's been this story because there's a court case where the two cakes from Aldi and Marks and Spencer's are very similar. Should you have a look at them side by side? Mm. I mean, they are a bit similar. Um, oh, my word. Oh, but one comes with a little baby. They're, they're similar in the sense that the, the, the Colin, the caterpillar cake, has been around for 20 years or so. Oh. And it could be argued in court by Marks and Spencers that this is the authentic version. And Cuthbert, the caterpillar, is attempting essentially to pass off as Colin. Well, that's been discussed in court. And Aldi actually have been kind enough to tweet an artist's impression of what's going on in the courtroom. Let's have a look. <laughs> is he being cross-examined at that point? <laughs> yeah, I put it to you, Cuthbert. Yes, you are fundamentally made of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, what would you like to see? A homemade Colin that probably won't be troubling the lawyers. What, made out of felt? It was just a, a home baker oh, right, and made a Colin. Yeah. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> And the Amazon logo, you're right, people said it looked like Hitler. How can you think that looks that like Hitler? That doesn't look nothing like Hitler. It oh. does look like Hitler. Is this on the internet, where everyone just says, you look like Hitler all the time? <laughs> I think it does look a bit like Hitler. What part what looks like Hitler? Well, I don't, it's sort of the fringe and the... Oh, is what? that the fringe? I thought that was the moustache. Oh, no, I'm assuming that's the fringe. Look, oh. because this is the mouth. Why would it be so far up? Oh, I get it now. And is the, is the arrow that's his mouth, is that pointing towards Czechoslovakia? <laughs> <laughs> And the waxwork of Donald Trump, uh, you're right, Paul, it was removed from a waxworks museum in Texas because visitors were attacking it. The, the figure had deep gouges inflicted by patrons of the museum who clawed and punched it. Gosh, they've got to stop Melania going in there. <laughs> <laughs> a spokesman for the Texas Waxwork Museum said, we are currently working on a likeness of Joe Biden. I'd get a move on if I were you. <laughs> Marks and Spencers have a cake called Colin the Caterpillar, who has a girlfriend cake called Connie the Caterpillar. Aww. And the co-op have a cake called Curious Caterpillar, who presumably would be perfectly happy to share a plate with either Colin or Connie. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Josh, here are yours. Lord Ascoyne Dascoyne, Alice the Rabbit, Prince Andrew and Mr Potato Head. Who is Lord Ascoyne? Dascoyne? He's a character from Kind Hearts Coronets. 
right. where Alec Guinness played all 14 characters and he had to murder everybody. I, I think it's about titles, though. I think it's about having your title taken away because um, Mr Potato Head has lost the Mr. Yep. They're now called Potato Head. They've been rebranded. Um, and this rabbit was in the news for being the world's biggest rabbit. He lost his knighthood, didn't he? He did. It was a lobbying scandal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think another rabbit was bigger than him. And then Prince Andrew, I think he's lost his title because they wouldn't make him admiral. So I think they've all lost their titles. They have all lost their title, apart from Prince Andrew, who never was an admiral. Oh. He just wanted to dress as one oh. at Edinburgh's funeral. <laughs> so normally, a member of the royal family if they've seen service at some point, would get the rank they would have had if they'd stayed in. So he would have been an admiral, right. but he deferred it because of the jiggery-pokery. Right. But then for the funeral, he wanted to dress as an admiral anyway. The right. problem is, OK, the royal family is in mourning and I'm really sorry he lost his father and I was very touched and moved by the funeral of the Duke of Edinburgh and yet it's hilarious that Prince Andrew wanted to dress as an admiral. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. Yeah. There's no getting away from it. It's but funny. that's all right. I don't know why these conflicting emotions worry you. That's what being British is. You find it simultaneously moving and hysterical. I assume he just is always dressed as an admiral at home, just all the time. I just the worry the uniform would be too heavy and that he might sweat. Oh, but of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Potato Head. Yes. Yes, the title was dropped. Yes, the classic toy is being oh. reimagined for the modern consumer. The Mr. has gone and they're replacing him later this year. You're going to get a kit with two adult potatoes, one baby potato, and 42 accessories. Oh. So that possibilities to create your own families are endless with mixing and mashing all the parts and pieces. It can't just be called Potato Head. No. There's nothing to announce it. Like, it's just like Potato Head. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't work. Yeah. It's an insult. He wouldn't be the success that he's been no. if no. he'd been launched just... as Potato Head. Oi, Potato Head, you can't park there. That's where the weasels are coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea you have to announce him as though he's coming into the funeral. <laughs> uh, Mr and Mrs Potato Head <laughs> <laughs> representing Potato Potato land. Uh, he's the not allowed to be deserve. Admiral Potato Head. That is not allowed. Take off that uniform. <laughs> they can't have a potato dressing as an admiral, for God's sake. And how do you think that the Americans reacted to the news that, that he was not being Mr anymore? By shouting and overreacting generally. Well, let's have a look. I want to know that Mr Potato Head is a man, not gender neutral. Stop the cancel culture! <laughs> uh, he's not going to be allowed at the town crier competition, though. No, he is not. Really. <laughs> and the rabbit, yes, Alice, uh, the giant rabbit, uh, lost her title to her son, Darius. Oh, I knew it. He's a so. bigger rabbit, although that rabbit has now gone missing. Darius is currently <gasps> missing, so if you see a giant rabbit... So has it gone missing in suspicious circumstances? Well, or, you know, the neighbours invited the owner round for a consoling chat over an oddly large pie. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't, that's awful. No, Darius the rabbit is fine and still the biggest rabbit in the world. And finally, Lord Ascoyne Dascoyne finds out he's now the ninth duke I... and he's so shocked he dies immediately. That's right. Oh. And loses his title. How bittersweet. That was, one of, that was one of the few impressions I could do, one of the characters Alec Guinness did in the, that film, because uh, Peter Sellers did it on a, a party. Parkinson show. As the old vicar, he says, um, the view from my west window has all the exuberance of Chaucer with none of the concomitant crudities of the period. Oh, very good. <laughs> 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 They've all lost their titles apart from Prince Andrew, who wanted to dress as an admiral even though he isn't one. A source close to the Duke told The Independent, Andrew will do what is appropriate. First time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features, as its guest publication, Puppetry International. It's <laughs> delivered by actual Thunderbirds, although in close-up you can see it's a real hand putting it in the letterbox. <laughs> Um, really <laughs> like You're pleased one. with that, are you? I really like that. Um, and we start with David Suchet said Prince Philip taught him what? Is it parkour? <laughs> <laughs> How to siphon petrol out of a lawnmower. <laughs> David Suchet said Prince Philip taught him how to prepare a mango. Presumably <laughs> he clicked his fingers and a footman appeared and prepared the mango. I want to learn how to prepare it. Prepare a mango. What are you preparing it for? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Battle. <laughs> Mr. Mango. <laughs> He's just called Mango now. Yeah. <laughs> Next, fashion outcry as Canada suggests what for Tokyo Olympics? Uh, hazmat team suit. <laughs> <laughs> Hot pants. Seafood blouses. 
Fashion <laughs> outcry as Canada suggests jean jackets for Tokyo Olympics. Oh, my word. Here are the questionable jackets. According to The Guardian, the jackets will be shown off when the Canadian team walk out for the closing ceremony, which, if they don't get COVID under control, will be on day two. <laughs> <laughs> Next, 117 years after the Wright brothers' first powered flight, what? EasyJet made it less pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Helicopter flies on Mars. Yes. 117 years after yeah. the Wright Brothers' first powered flight, brilliant. NASA lands a helicopter on Mars. It's brilliant. It's, they flew it for, for 30 seconds, three metres up, then it came down again. And they've just today, I see, they've created oxygen. They've managed to create oxygen that would last 10 minutes. They've sent a dog up there called Rover, and he's doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Have they cut a little face There's off? a dog on Mars, yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they yeah. did send a dog to the moon. Yeah, no, no, Mars is just around the corner from there. You don't know about space. <laughs> okay. We've been to Saturn for you, holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Next, when a theatre director calls and says they would like puppets in their production, the first two questions you should ask are what and what. Are you mad? <laughs> and oh. who's paying? <laughs> How did you get my number and what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> when a theatre director calls and says they would like puppets in their production, the first two questions you should ask are when does it open and is there a budget? Close, <laughs> not close. close. But who needs a big budget? Surely you can do a puppet show on a shoestring. Or six shoestrings if it's a big puppet. <laughs> and finally, garden gnomes are hard to find because what? They're not allowed in groups of more than six in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> garden centres are not allowing you to buy them. More topical. Oh, because they keep lobbying the Prime Minister. No. Not that topical. Um, this is a terrible round. Nobody's got any points. It's always good when the host ends by saying, this is a terrible round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for all. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched point. your quiz show on a Monday night. Yeah. You never say that's a terrible round. Yeah. You get more points. Yeah, when right. all the people from the library come on and don't get it right, they don't get it. Bozos is the next one. <laughs> Right, I've tried, but I'm going to tell you the answer. Go on, then. Garden gnomes are hard to find because supplies were held up in Suez Canal oh. blockage. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. yes, this is the news that there's a shortage of garden gnomes in Britain. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> the final scores are Ian and Josh have four, Paul and Emma have five. Oh, what? Right. Well done. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> And I leave you with news that the Great British Bake Off's new head of procurement tries to deflect blame after sourcing a batch of flammable oven mitts from his uncle's postman. <laughs> <laughs> In Surrey Heath, two hours after his birthday party was due to start, Michael Gove starts to wonder if anyone is going to show up. <laughs> 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 and in Swindon, one customer finally gets to the head of the queue on the Tesco home delivery website. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night.